Today, we're going to fire the Martini at 100 to 400 yards. Now, I haven't shot the Martini anything past 100, so I'm definitely interested to see the results. I'm anticipating have to overset the sights, just based on a previous experience, albeit with other rifles. So we'll see. Weather permitting, the results should be okay. For this shoot, I used two types of targets. For the 100 yard confirmatory zero, I used my zeroing target, gridded with one inch squares. For ranges two to four, I used my steel plate 20 inch by 40 inch gong. Standard with any serious range practice, the bore must first be dried of all oil. Subsequent to that, the blackening of the foresight barley corn and the rear sight notch are always good to ensure that you've got a nice crisp black sight picture. Now this may seem a little gratuitous, but I try to ensure that all my equipment serves some purpose for my shooting activities. In this case on the P71 equipment, to replace the mess tin, I have my aiming rest and to replace the great coat, my shooting mat. The removal of these items is simple and quick. Now the aiming rest takes some assembly to get it fully functional. First it gets removed from its oilskin cover. Then the legs are removed from its individual pouch. With the included allen key, the bolts get removed from the bottom of the aiming rest and inserted, fixing the legs in place. The hole is very secure and is padded on top with an oilskin cover. The shooting mat is constructed so that it can be folded up, making it the approximate dimension of a rolled grey coat or blanket. Once assembled in position, all that has to happen is to get comfy and shoot. As with any series of range practices, it's always good to know where your rifle's shooting that day. So by shooting a confirmatory group, five or ten rounds, you'll be able to establish your point of impact in relation to your point of aim. One of the main issues with gaining accuracy with your martini is one of fouling management. And it's my intent to do a video strictly on this aspect. That said, I thought I'd introduce you to the concept of blow tubing. By directing your breath down the barrel in a long and slow fashion, moisture from your breath is left to condense on the inside of the barrel. This moisture softens the fouling and allows for accuracy to be maintained for a greater number of rounds. Methods of directing your breath down the bore are as limitless as your imagination. Personally, I use this device. It's an old martini case with the base bored out and a 303 case beveled and soldered to it. It's simple, low profile, and fits easily in my haversack. As you can see, a complete cycle, including blow tubing, takes almost one minute. It does, however, have the added benefit of one, putting the breaths that you already have to take as part of your shooting cycle to good use, and two, keeping the rate of fire down so that the barrel doesn't get too warm. Now I shoot the warming rounds with the same consistency as the rounds for quote unquote score. This ensures that my rhythm is established and that a consistent amount of fouling is present in the barrel. So I'm reasonably happy with those results, the five rounds, uh, typically shooting a little bit high, but generally in the center, right here. So I think that's good enough to progress and move back to uh, 200 yards and uh, see about uh, moving back even farther and ringing the gong. Swabbing the bore of a martini after every round isn't really an option. 
due to the nature of the falling block, there is no straight shot through the bore. Any cleaning rod must be inserted through the muzzle, and this definitely interferes with one's rhythm. Typically, I swab a bore every five rounds, or at the end of that particular group, and this ensures that the fouling doesn't build up to too great a degree. The process doesn't take very long, and one damp patch followed by a couple of run-throughs with a dry one is usually sufficient. Based on experience with other rifles, despite the fact that I may be shooting somewhat reduced loads, I found that the 200 yard setting is usually sufficient for shooting at 200 yards. Now I wasn't expecting too much difficulty here at 200, and the results seemed to show that any apprehension I may have had was unwarranted. Based on experience with other rifles, use of the 400 yard setting for shooting at 300 is usually what works. So you might imagine that by shooting it by oneself, it's a little bit difficult to figure out where your bullets are impacting, especially when they don't hit the steel. So for this practice, I fired at least three rounds with the same sight setting and point of aim. By this point in the group, it was obvious that I wasn't hitting the target. So I changed the point of aim to the center of the target and it appeared as though that adjustment was correct. Once I made the adjustment in the point of aim, things ended up quite well at 300. Now, off to the four. Before shooting could begin, an adjustment to the sights would be necessary. I flipped up the ladder and set the sight for 500 yards. Like I did at the 300 yard mark, I decided to shoot a series of rounds with the same sight setting and point of aim just to establish some consistency, even if it was consistency in missing. Because of the great range, I did use a video camera, zoomed in, to review each shot. This process is very lengthy and takes a considerable amount of patience. It does, however, have a hidden benefit in that it keeps your rate of fire down, and as a result, the barrel doesn't heat up quite so much. In reviewing the footage from these first few shots, I noticed that most of the rounds were hitting low and or slightly right. So I decided to make the 800 yard round trip to the target, have a look at it and see if I could confirm the evidence of this. Based on seeing the ground all torn up below the target, and after checking the sight, realizing that I hadn't actually set it to 500 yards, I reset the sight, and then it started to rain. I changed my point of aim to the lower left corner, and this seemed to place the rounds hitting in the top portion of the target. Generally, throughout this practice, I was quite pleased with the way the rifle performed. Notwithstanding the difficulties I had at the 400 yard mark, things ended up quite well, and I'm now confident of taking on other challenges, such as a scaled annual musketry qualification circa 1885, perhaps the subject of another video. <laughs>